Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Jerry and I have a project I've been scheming up in my head for the Frontier OS 27 and I'm building an auto feed for it. I've mentioned it a little bit in passing and I've started working on it, started gathering the parts and I'm going to go through what I'm going to do to, with it. And it's probably going to be a two or three part video um, and I'm, I'm going to take you along the, uh, the whole journey with it. So I started getting everything together and let me show you what we have. I have two of these electric wheelchair motors. You can get these on eBay. Uh, they're not expensive. I think I paid $70 for two of them. They've had the brakes removed. Uh, they're 12, 12 to 24 volts. You can run 12 volts with them through them or 24 volts. I'm not sure uh, what I'm going to use if I'm going to use 12 or 24. My gearing that I engineered up is designed for 12 volts and at 12 volts this rotates between 65 and 70 rpms per minute depending on the state of charge and that will allow my uh, feed i'll have a 10 second return at full speed actually it's closer to 12 seconds mathematically counting the sprockets and rpms we'll see if it actually comes to that one now uh, we get into actually using it in the field and <clears throat> it, I can slow it down to zero so I have two of these they're a left and right hand this is the left hand and I have the right hand mounted to this piece of MDF right now and I just have it mocked up there right now so let me show you what we have on this I want to take this off real quick here So what I have here is I have a 420 sprocket, a 420 sprocket with a 17 millimeter uh, shaft collar. And this is just a clamp on shaft collar. I don't know if you can see that right, right there's the socket head screw. And I just took the shaft collar, it's not hardened, and I just threaded it, 1024, and I had these little 1024 socket head cap screws that I put on. So the shaft collar will tighten down. And it does tighten down. I put these socket, or these stainless steel screws on an angle in such a manner that this shaft collar can still tighten up so this just slips on now this motor does have this motor does have a keyway you can see that right there it does have a keyway in it but i won't be using a keyway right now i'm just going to rely on the clamping force of the shaft collar if i need to um i will grind a i'll grind a spot for a key to go in there this isn't real hard steel. It was it drilled and tapped relatively easy. So that's going to go on. So that will just slip on here. There's a spot where it slides down right there. So that will slide in and out. So I can use this for adjustment actually to slide it in and out. This MDF now, this is going to be my template. So I have this thick plate of steel here. It's, this is going to be way overkill. Uh, let's see how thick it is. I think it's 3 8 Now I'll go through all the parts I have here. Yes, this is 3 8 So I'm going to cut that. In fact, I'm going to take that off right now. So I know this plate will work. So this MDF, I didn't want to cut any steel until I realized what I was doing. Had it all figured out. So now we, we can cut this. So I know this is going to work. I ha this is held on by three fasteners. There's six millimeter fasteners. I only have one on it right now. But I do have the three holes in a template. So all I got to do is transfer them to the steel. I had this chunk of steel for another project I was working on and 
never used it so it's going to work great for this i'm going to make it this big i think it could be probably two inches smaller this direction but i don't want to cut myself short let's talk about some other things i have i have a handful of these limit switches i had laying around <clears throat> and these are these are really cool if you've never used these um Normally opened or normally closed, either one. So I'm going to use these. Right down here. We'll figure out some way to fashion these on and have them stop the machine. In case it gets away from you, you don't want... You don't want this machine. These motors have a lot of torque. We don't want these machines coming and slamming into the end here and overloading the motor. We're going to talk about overloading this motor here shortly too. So that these limit switches, I'm going to have one in front and one in back so it can't slam. That's the plan. You're going to see if this works. This is all theory right now. All right, so what else do I have here? I have some 420 chain. And I didn't know what size chain to get. Um, I was going to go with number 40, but I like the sounds of 420 chain better. So we went with that. I think it's the same. They're half inch. It's a half inch pitch. Um, I think 420 is just a little bit wider. This is going to be way overkill. <clears throat> Along with that sprocket you saw here, this is a 19 tooth sprocket. And I have two of these idler idler pulleys and these are going to direct the chain up to the sprocket so there's going to be three of them three sprockets in total i have a what else do we have oh, let's talk about how we're going to control it if you've never used these things this is a pulse width modulator controller Um, it controls DC motors. This is a 30 amp. Um, and I believe these motors, and I'm going to have to check the amperage draw when I start using them and put them under load. Um, I believe these motors are about four, three to four amps continuous, you know, and obviously startup is going to be pretty high, uh, probably 20 amp at startup. So, uh, I'll probably put a, probably a 10 or 15 amp fuse in there. And see how it goes if it blows it i'll uh put a put a bigger one in there i have this all thread rod here that's going to be used to attach the chain to so i'll attach the chain to the end of this and i'll have a bracket on each end one will have this spring on it i don't know if the spring is going to be necessary but it will keep tension on the chain and it will it will keep the thing from hitting hard I think. I'm not 100% sure. If it stops, these motors do stop pretty quick. Not as quick as they would if you had the electric brakes on them. Um, but they stop pretty abruptly. So here, this is how I'm thinking about the chain drive, what it's going to look like. <clears throat> so we have the chain on each end. We're going to have the drive sprocket. with the motor i'm going to have an idler pulley idler idle pulley idler pulley either one <clears throat> so i have those idler pulleys uh one down here and one right here so this will come up and around this chain will come like this and then back out the other side this will be the drive and this will be attached obviously to the to the the sled I don't know if I'm hoping you can see this and then the sled will should move back and forth 
So the real question is, <clears throat> can I get through that steel plate with only one cutoff wheel? I have torches, tanks are empty. I don't feel like getting them taken care of right now and filled up, which would work, but this will, and that will make a jagged edge. I'm just gonna cut this. This will make a nice smooth edge. So let's see how it goes. Let me get my glasses on. Safety glasses, along with the readers. Excuse the mess in here. So I was able to get through this all right, and I was able to snap off the remaining of it. I need to go clean up the edges on the snag grinder. So this portion of the video, for some reason, the audio was messed up, so I will talk over what I'm doing. I currently have in my hand the first uh, mount I made, and I happened to put all the holes in this piece of MDF, so I'm going to transfer those holes onto the piece of steel that I just cut out. So I'm just using the proper size transfer punch and transferring the holes through the MDF onto the steel bracket. Here I'm drilling out the holes in the plate I just made to accept the fasteners that will hold on the motor. All three holes are drilled and now I'm just chamfering the top edges. Here I'm mounting the motor to the bracket we just built. What I'm doing here is I'm using that piece of MDF that I mocked up the bracket with and I put some holes in it to transfer onto the uprights. I'm going to use those holes to mount the motor and bracket on. I like that. I just ended up getting another bit. I think it's sharper. Oh yeah. One thing I just realized, I won't be able to use that plate, that MDF that I used to, tra to transfer the holes here. I won't be able to use it on my plate. I'm going to have to transfer them through here to that steel plate because these aren't going to be exactly on this side as they are on this side, only because of the fact I've got that, the end of the bit. You know, I don't have a center drill there. So, all right, I'm going to pop these out to two over three eighths. So what I'm going to do, this plate's heavy, especially with the motor on it and all that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer those holes onto this piece of MDF here. That's got to be it, right? Yep.
Okay, I have those holes transferred from the heads upright to this piece of MDF, which now I'm gonna transfer If I did everything right, these are going to fit right in there. All right, we got the plate lightly on, finger tight. I'm going to get the motor mounted. There is no welding needed except for the two end brackets that will hold the chain. So now you can see, I'll have some adjustment here. Oop. So I'll be able to slide this in and out. This idler pulley into here, and I might back it up with a nut. Uh, I might be able to get a nut on it. So, let's see. Oh yeah, I'm able to get a nut on the back side of it as well. So I'll thread that in. I will tap this. I'll thread this in and and I'll put a nut on it and that will lock that in. So what I'm looking to do now is find out where I want to put this idler pulley. So I'm going to put it directly under the current pulley and to the side. down good so let's put that one same idea chip off, advance, break the chip, advance, and come through. I'm going to use these little shoulder bolts right here. I don't know if you can see those or not. Three eighths, half inch, and <clears throat> these other little pulleys will slide on them just like that. It's been nice. These other little pulleys have, uh, you can change the bearings in these. That was pretty nice. They weren't much. I'll put all the, the links to everything I use in here at the bottom of the page here. I have to have that all, one more. And that's pretty close. Let's see what that looks like. We can always adjust these. All right, now it's time to start working on these brackets. So I have the one right here. And what it's gonna be, I'm gonna have a piece of steel. I've got the piece of metal in my hand here. It's gonna be, I'm gonna weld it onto this end, run my half inch all thread through here that will be lined up with the sprockets. And we will go from there. So you can see what I've done here. I've got some all thread, half inch, and I put a flat on it, and that will accept the chain. The master link will go through there. I put this spring on it to tension it, and hopefully that will keep uh, tension on the chain and also keep it from hitting hard when it stops and starts. I may have to do something right here, um, either crank this uh, nut in a little further, get it but I don't know how much tension will be on that spring or get a little shorter spring or cut, I'm sorry, just, we'll just cut this spring. I guess that'd be what we'd do. Just cut that spring and move that, that 
uh, nut up. <clears throat> so that's on the back side. And down on here on the front side, we just have this bracket created with that half inch all thread. And I just welded that onto the existing lock that was already on the machine. I've got my last connection to hook up on the chain. Uh, I've spliced the chain together, I cut it to length, and I'm gonna put in the last master link, and I'm gonna be able to wire this up just to try it, and we'll see how it goes. So I just have regular standard master links here. And the keeper. Okay, my chain is a little loose, so I'm going to have to bring it in a little bit. Okay, so. All right. All right, guys, I've got the chain all hooked up. Now you can see the tensioner I have. Goes under that idler pulley, up over the drive sprocket, under that idler pulley, and back to the bracket. All right, guys. I've got the pulse width modulator control unit hooked up to the battery and to the motor. I haven't tried anything yet. We're ready to try it. So the first thing I need to do is see if we got power. So here's the LED. Let's uh, make sure the switch is off. Okay, it's off. Hopefully you can see all this. All right, we have power. So my wife just came out to witness the, the very first test run of it. Let me make sure there's nothing in the way that I can hit because I don't have limit switches or overload relays on it. Everything looks good. I'm a little nervous, I'm not gonna lie. So I'm gonna start this at really low. Get this so I can see the meter. Let's see what happens. I think we have a uh, auto feed. Oh, I'm everything looks good. It does stop pretty hard. Let's see what coming back. Oop, wrong way. We did it. I hear some crink kinking in there. I'm not sure what I'm hearing. Ooh. Maybe one of the sprockets aren't perfectly in line. I'm not pushing it, guys. Let's turn it up, see how fast it goes. That's full speed. That ain't gonna be bad. Let's go the other way. Oh, oh, oh. Start off slow, ease into the log. And that's full speed with 12 volts. So it would almost double this speed if I put a 20 volt, 24 volt system on it. I think we did it. Yeah. I think we did it. 
All right, so next I gotta, I just gotta get everything buttoned up, <clears throat> get a, some wiring harnesses on here, uh, proper uh, AC to DC inverter so I don't always have to use the, or converter so I don't have to use the battery. When I'm out at the sawmill shed, I'm just going to plug it in. So I'll have a little box up here. Is the plan, have all the electronics in it. So guys, that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching. I'll, I'll keep you informed. Uh, the next video will be me putting this all together in the box, cleaning it all up. Oh, I also have to put the limit switches on so it doesn't run into the ends. And I'll just wire those into this rocker switch up here. So, all right, guys, thank you. And uh, take care. Have a great day.